Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Light Panel. Light Panel is a Lightroom Classic plugin from On One Software. With it, you could easily call and edit an entire photo shoot in a lot less time than it would take than if you were using Lightroom Classic by itself. Now, I've been meaning to do a video on Light Panel for some time. What prompted me to finally do this first video on Light Panel is that I recently found out that the Professional Photographers of America are now recommending Light Panel in their buyer's guide. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to On One's website and I'll have a discount code there. You could check out Light Panel for yourself. Now, as I mentioned, Light Panel is a Lightroom Classic plugin. The way you would use it is you would do your photo shoot, of course, and then you would import your images into Lightroom. As you can see, I have Lightroom Classic open. I have a photo shoot. I'm on the folder of the photo shoot. These are totally unedited RAW files. At this point, I want to call these images, and then I want to edit them. So I'm going to do that by bringing up Light Panel. To do that, go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, then in this little section, you'll see Light Panel 2025. Click on Start. What will happen is Light Panel will open. The first thing it will do is it will check to see if there's an update available. If there is, it will prompt you to update. If not, it will just open as you see it did on my computer. Now, as the name implies, Light Panel is a panel. And you could float it, put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it over here on the right right now. Now, one thing, when you first install Light Panel in Lightroom Classic, the way it's probably going to work is that it's going to open every time you open up Lightroom Classic. I don't like it doing that because I'm often editing like non like photo shoot images in Lightroom like an odd landscape image or something like that so I don't want light panel to always open every time I open Lightroom Classic to change that behavior go to preferences with light panel open at the very bottom in the left hand corner is preferences click on that and a preferences window will appear go to the general tab and just uncheck the check bar box start with Lightroom now Light panel will only open when you tell it to open. While we're here, I do want to talk about something else very quickly. We're going to go to the Cull tab. Now, the way Light Panel works is you will go through the Im your images and you will determine which images you want to edit. Light Panel calls those images selects. The way you tell Light Panel that you have a selects image is you give it by default a five star rating. So you can see right here, selects five stars. If you don't like using, let's say five stars, you prefer to use two stars or three stars, you could change that. Or if you want to give it a flag instead, or if you want to give it a color label instead. So you could change the selects designation to whatever you want. I'm going to leave it at its default five stars. So we'll close this down. So, okay, we have our photo shoot in Lightroom Classic. I'm in the folder, and you have to be in a folder, by the way. It won't work if you're in a collection. So you need to be in the folder. The next thing you would do with Light Panel open is you would analyze your image and it, images, and it's all automatic. All you need to do is go up here, and there's this Analyze button. Click on it, and then it's going to come up with this warning. What's going to happen is Light Panel is going to go through all your images, and if you have any images that have existing flags, ratings, or labels, it's going to overwrite those flags, ratings, or labels. So be aware of that. So uh, these images are straight out of camera. There's no flags, ratings, or color labels on them at all. So I don't worry about that. I'm just going to click Analyze. So what will happen now is Light Panel is going to go, th go through these, and it's going to categorize them. You're going to have, as you'll see in a moment, a category with eyes closed. And you can see that I don't have any images with their eyes closed. You'll have a category they call dupes. Now these aren't necessarily duplicate images. What they are is they're duplicate poses because often if you're doing a photo shoot, you're going to, let's say, have a group of people together and you're going to take a shot and maybe you thought someone blinked or maybe you want to get a different expression or maybe you have like one person looking at the camera, another person look at the, at the other person, you know, and you change their 
where they're looking. So you take another shot, but it's the same pose. That's what dupes are. What that allows you to do is very quickly go through all those similar images and pick out which ones you want to be selects. So those are dupes. Filtered are images that aren't dupes. Basically, they're unique images. And then, of course, we have selects. Now, that's at zero because I haven't selected any yet. So the way this would work is after you do your analyzation, go to the dupes category. What you'll have is the images in survey mode automatically, as you could see here. So these are actually two different images, even though they look identical. They're two different images. And what I could do now is pick one, both, or neither to be a select image. And all I need to do that is give it five stars by tapping the five key on my keyboard. So I did that on this image. To move to the next image, I could go up here and use these arrow keys, or I could use the right arrow key on my computer to just flip between these two. Sometimes you'll have more than two. Now, if you want to go to the next group of dupes, hold in the command or control key and then hit the right arrow key and you'll go to the next group of dupes. Now here they're underexposed because the background was real bright and I didn't want to blow out the background. So uh, let's say I like that first one. I'll give that five stars. I want to go to the next group of dupes. Hold the command key on my Mac and it's control key on the PC. Hit the right arrow key. Now this group of dupes, there's five here. Now you can see what I meant by here uh, he's looking at her here she's looking they're looking at each other i guess they're looking at each other but you can see how they're kind of different like poses slightly but it's still the same kind of setting so i like this first one we'll give that five and i like this last one so i'll give that five and i'll go to the next group and this one i like um i like that middle one so we'll give that five we'll go to the next group i like this one I'll give that five We'll go to the next group. I like the middle one. We'll give that five. We'll go to the next group. I like the second one. We'll give that five. Uh, you like that second one? Now, you don't have to give, if you have a set of dupes like this, if you don't like any of them, just go to the next. You don't have to give anything five if you don't want to. So the first one's pretty good there. This one, almost identical poses. We'll go to that one there. This one, I kind of like this one and this one and we'll go to this group uh i got like the first one and you'll notice too uh as i go through the dupes light panel itself has their faces so that you could see if maybe two very similar images if one is slightly out of focus compared to another that helps you decide that or determine that with these close-ups other faces so that's what that's there for and that's a, you know, very useful tool. And I like that first one. And here's a lot of similar poses. I like the first one. And I like the last one. And here, I think I like the first one. And I like the second one. And here, another, a lot of similar poses. Kind of like the first one. And I like that one there, I think, and that one. And here, I like the first one, and I like that one. And here, I like that one. And we're right back where we started. So I went through all of the images very quickly, and now I have 26 selects, as you could see. So now I'm ready to edit. What I suggest you do, though, is make sure that the film strip has all the selects in it. The selects have five stars. So go down to your filter and click on the five star icon right here. I could move light panel out of the way so you can see what I mean. So just go down here and get that. So now we only have five star images down in the film strip. Then go back to light panel. And to demo this, I'm going to modify my Lightroom just a little bit so you can better see what I'm doing is I'm going to move Lightroom over here. And then I'm going to bring light panel and put it over here because I want to show you what exactly gets um, edited when you're doing edits. So we have our images um, called. I have 23 or 26 selects. So they're over here. 
Now what you do is just go to the Develop tab in Light Panel. Now you'll notice in Lightroom, I'm in the Library module. As soon as I click to the Develop tab in Light Panel, it brings me to the Library module. And it's made editing super easy. What you could do is all kind of similar images, do an edit on one of those, and then you could copy the edit through Light Panel to all the others. This is what saves so much time. So, for example, this image here, let's do an edit on it. Now, you're not going to touch any of the controls in Lightroom. You're going to do it all in Light Panel. If I needed to auto crop and level, I could do that. I'm not going to do that. But let's do auto tone, and let me show you what that does. So, you click auto tone. And you'll notice then it did an auto tone adjustment on the image. And if you look at Lightroom Classics basic panel, you could see that these six sliders were moved in the tone section. One thing, though, that I want you to be aware of, this isn't a Lightroom Classic auto adjustment. You could see that auto is not chosen up here. It's an actual AI adjustment from Light Panel examining the scene and adjusting tone accordingly. You'll have a single slider here, and with that single slider, you could increase the effect or decrease the effect. Watch as I move the slider to the right. You'll notice the sliders in the Lightroom Basic panel are moving. If I move it to left, they're moving in. If you want to reset a slider, double-click on the name of the slider, and you'll reset the slider. So, again, this isn't a Lightroom auto adjustment. It is a unique adjustment done by um, light panel and it's a new, unique adjustment like if you went on a different image it would probably be different now if you want to do auto white balance you could here I want to pop the subject so I'm going to click here and you'll notice it's building a mask for the subject and it did it now I want to make a darkened background so we'll click this and it's going to build a mask for the background so it darkened the background now it has portrait retouching so let's say you want a smooth skin do that it will build masks for their skin and smooth their skin again you could increase or decrease it with the slider i want to do i know i just i don't like darkening eyebrows typically i'm going to brighten the eye whites though again it's going to build a mask for that i'm going to enhance the iris and let's whiten teeth now you see how easy that was to do literally a full edit on this single image now this is where you could save a lot of time you could copy this edit to either all the other images in that are five star select images. If you want to do that, just go here and click sync to all and it will sync your edits to everything. Now, one thing about syncing edits, it doesn't just copy these Lightroom sliders exactly and plop them on another image. What it will actually do is it will examine each of those images and when it does an auto tone adjustment for that image, it will be unique to that image. Now often, if you are copying it to similar looking images, the settings will be very close, if not exact. But it is a unique adjustment. Also, as far as the masking is concerned, it creates unique masks every time for every image. So it's not copying exact adjustments from one image to another. Each of the images are going to be unique. Now, what I prefer to do, though, is on a typical photo shoot, I'll have them in different scenes. Like I had them with the lake behind them, and then I had them with just like trees behind them. So what I want to do is copy this edit to similar images. So what I'll do is I'll select others in the film strip. Like this one here, even though they're in front of a lake, I'll copy it to that. This one, this one this one, this one, this one, this one. Let's say that for now. So I have uh, three, seven. So I have seven images that I want to copy the original edit to. To do that, click on sync to selected. So when you click on that, it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to sync these settings to seven photos? So click yet. Yeah. Okay, now when I do this, this will take a little longer because it is doing a unique edit to all seven of these images. So if you are doing a huge photo shoot and you are copying an edit to like, you know, hundreds of images, this will take some time. So just click OK and then go get a cup of coffee or something and then come back and it will be done and you could like give it to your client. You're done. So what I'll do is I'll click OK and I'll pause this recording and we'll come back when it's done. 
Okay, we're back. I really didn't need to pause the video because I only synced it to seven images, so it took just a couple seconds, but I did get a cup of coffee. Anyway, it is uh, synced. We're on that original image that I edited, and just to show you, if you look at these adjustments here, and I go to a, a totally different image over here, you can see that the adjustments are different for this image. That one I didn't sync to. Let me find one I synced to here. Here's one. So you go different adjustments here and there. So that is light panel. Again, I hope you could see how much you could save time editing images. One thing I didn't cover is if you do have any images that are a little crooked, um, you could very easily take care of that as well. Let me see if I could find one that I was uh, maybe a little bit crooked with. Um, not that one. No, most of mine are pretty straight. Um but every now and then when I start, especially if I start to get tired and I'm in a long photo shoot, I'll start getting a little careless and it'll be a little crooked. This one might be a little crooked. Uh, to straighten that up, uh, out, just go over here and choose your aspect ratio. I'll keep the original two to three aspect ratio. Click on auto crop and level and you can see that it takes care of it just like that. And that is another adjustment that you could copy to all the other images as well. And it will be a unique uh, auto crop and level for each of the images so you're not going to automatically level everything the same exact way it's going to get um, leveled for for the scene for the exact scene the image is in so that's my first video on light panel as you can see there's a lot more here so in future videos i'll delve into some of the other features of light panel again in the description below this video I'll have a link to On One's website, and you could check out Light Panel for yourself. I'm pretty sure they have a fully working free trial. I have a discount code as well. I'll have that listed uh, in the description below this video as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.